astrology has grown modern astronomy, from alchemy has grown modern chemistry, from the mystic psychology has grown the modern psychology of the schools. But it must not be supposed that the ancients were ignorant of that which the modern schools supposed to be their exclusive and special property. The records engraved on the stones of ancient Egypt show conclusively that the ancients had a full comprehensive knowledge of astronomy. The very building of the pyramids shows the connection between that design and the study of astronomical science. Nor were they ignorant of chemistry, for the fragments of the ancient writings show that they are acquainted with the chemical properties of these things. In fact, the ancient theories regarding physics are being slowly verified by the latest discoveries of modern science, notably those relating to the constitution of matter. Nor must it be supposed that they were ignorant of the so-called modern discoveries in psychology. On the contrary, the Egyptians were especially skilled in the science of psychology, particularly in the branches that the modern schools ignore, but which nevertheless are being uncovered under the name of psychic science, which perplexing the psychologists of this day and making them reluctantly admit that there may be something in it after all. The truth is that beneath the material chemistry, astronomy, and psychology, that is the psychology of the phases of brain action, the ancients possessed a knowledge of transcendental astro astronomy called astrology, of transcendental chemistry called alchemy, and of transcendental psychology called mystic psychology. They possess the inner knowledge as well as the outer knowledge, the latter alone being possessed by modern scientists. Among the many secret branches of knowledge possessed by their medicines was that known as mental transmutation, which forms the subject matter of this lesson. Transmutation is a term usually employed to designate the ancient art of the transmutation of metals, particularly of base metals into gold. The word transmute, the word transmute means to change from one nature, form, or substance into another, to transform Webster's dictionary and accordingly. Mental transmutation means that the art of changing and transforming mental states, forms, and conditions to others, so you may see that mental transmutation is the art of mental chemistry. If you like the term, a form of practical mystic psychology, but this means far more than appears on the surface. Transmutation, alchemy, or chemistry on the mental plane is important enough in its effects to be sure, and if the art stopped there, it would still be one of the most important branches of study known to man, but this is only the beginning. Let us see why. The first of the seven thermetic principles is the principle of mentalism, the axiom of which is the all is mind, the universe is mental, which means that the underlying reality of the universe is mind, and the universe itself is a mental thing existing in the mind of the all. We shall consider the principle in successive lessons, but let us see effect of the principle, if it is to be assumed to be true. If the universal is mental in its nature, then mental transmutation must be the art of changing the conditions of the universe along the lines of matter, force, and mind. So you see, therefore, that mental transmutation is really the magic of which the ancient writers had so much to say in their mystical works about which they gave so much practical instruction. If all is mental, then the art which enables one to transmute mental conditions must render the master the controller of material conditions as well as those ordinarily called mental. As a matter of fact, none but advanced mental alchemists have been able to attain the degree of power necessary 
to control the browser bit of physical matter. Such as the control of the elements of nature, the production of cessation of tempests, and the production and cessation of earthquakes and other great physical phenomena. But that such men have existed and do exist today is a matter of earnest belief to all advanced occultists of the schools that the masters exist and have these powers. The best teachers assure that their students, having had experience which justify them in such belief and statements, these masters do not make public exhibitions of their powers, but seek seclusion from the crowds of men in order to better work their way along the path of attainment. We mention their existence of at this point merely to call your attention to the fact that their power is entirely mental and operates along the lines of the higher mental transmutation under the hermetic principles of mentalism. The universe is mental, the Kybalion. The students and practitioner of mental transmutation works among the mental planes transmuting mental conditions, states, etc. into others according to various formulas, more or less efficacious. The various treatments, affirmations, denials, etc. of the schools of mental science are by formulas, often quite imperfect and unrealistic of the hermetic art. The majority of modern practitioners are quite ignorant compared to the ancient masters, for they lack the fundamental knowledge upon which the work is based. Notably, may the mental states, etc., one self may be changed or transmuted by hermetic methods, but also the states of others may be, and are constantly transmuted in the same way, usually unconsciously, but often consciously by some understanding the laws and principles in cases where people affects, affected are not informed of the principles of self-protection. And more than this, as many students and practitioners of modern mental science know, every material condition depending upon the minds of other people may be changed or transmuted in accordance with the earnest desire, will, and treatments of persons desiring change conditions of life. The public are so generally informed regarding these things at present that we do not deem it necessary to mention this name at length, our purpose at this point being merely to show the hermetic principle and art underlying all of these various forms of practice, good and evil, or the force can be used in opposite directions according to the hermetic principles of polarity. In this little book, we shall state the basic principles of mental transmutation, that all who read may grasp the underlying principle and thus possess the master key that will unlock the many doors of the principles of polarity. We shall now proceed to a consideration of the first of the Hermetic Seven Principles, the principle of mentalism, in which it is explained the truth that the all is mind, the universe is mental. In the words of the Kybalion, we ask the clo for close attention and careful study of the great principles on part of our students, for it is really the basic principles of the whole hermetic philosophy and the hermetic art of mental transmutation. Thank you. Our next session will be on Chapter 4 of the Kabbalion. I hope you enjoy.